By now, you've probably seen or heard the news that Africans are trying to win themselves off of the over-dependence on the US dollar. And some people are sensationalizing the headline and saying, oh, the dollar is finished. And some are saying, kill the dollar for the African economies to be able to come up and, and be able to be stable on their own and reduce the power that we've given America over some of these African economies. But what's the reality on the ground? Well, a country like Zimbabwe is still suffering from some of the, what do you call them, sanctions that were imposed on the country from many years ago, five years, seven years, 10 years ago. And that has sort of destabilized the country and sort of destabilized the local currency. And it has little to no value. And that's because the people who hold the power dictate what happens in your country. And the South African president, or rather former South African president, Thabo Mbeki is saying, it is time to kill the dollar reduce its dominance so that Africans can have a little bit of say and power over what happens in the economy. The basis that you are using their currency in order to avoid the consequences of sanctions that arise from that, let's walk away from the dollar. And hence the there's a global discussion taking place. Hello there, how are you doing? Thank you for joining us in another one of our videos. My name is Ndiro Ganga. I am a business journalist by profession and also a digital content creator. Um, I make videos on diaspora relocation to the continent and you can find me on YouTube at Ondiro Oganga or you can find me on social media and we can connect and be friends over there at Ondiro Oganga on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. I came across this very interesting video. So over the last month, there's been a lot of conversation about BRICS and that's another video that we'll get into um, during another time. But the second half of 2022 coming into 2023 was a very turbulent year for many african economies and not just african economies many developing countries the dollar was um gaining mileage and many african currencies really paid the price i mean i live in ghana and the ghanaian city went from being the best performing currency against the dollar in 2019 to being the worst performing currency against the dollar the zambian quarter also took a hit the kenyan shilling is still taking a hit um, a couple of years ago, three, four, five years ago, the dollar to the Kenyan shilling was a hundred and now it's at about 134 and it just keeps gaining momentum every single day. Now, what does this mean for African economies, particularly many of them that heavily rely on borrowing and they borrow um, on the dollar, they trade with the dollar. It just means that the cost of doing business becomes very expensive. Life becomes very expensive. Inflation goes up and we all know how African economies are. They, there are certain economies like China and America and the UK that can with ease, not easily, but with a little bit of ease, absorb some of the shocks on the economy. But some African economies, some of these shocks really trigger um, some detriment to the economy. And when I say the economy is such a large picture, but the people that suffer are the ordinary Ghanaians, the ordinary Zambians, Zimbabweans, Kenyans, South Africans. And so African leaders and leaders from developed and developing worlds are sitting down and saying this has to come to an end our over dependence on the dollar is really hurting us and why do we honestly have to depend on the dollar to trade amongst each other if brazil and china are doing business why should the u.s dollar be the central currency that they do business with you know and russia has been at the forefront of leading this agenda because that's what it is it's an agenda whoever it benefits we will wait and see and africa has been in the midst of it particularly um south africa and we're just seeing that conversation is beginning to take place and not just in south africa i mean the president of kenya true or not has been going on and on and on about how kenyan companies have reached an agreement with um the united arab emirates to import oil 
on Kenya shillings basis vis-a-vis -vis the dollar. Um, Tanzania is also doing the same with some of its traders and agreeing that they will pay in their local currency as opposed to the dollar to reduce pressure that the country will have on accessing dollars. And you know, it's very important to know that South Africa is one of the leading countries in Africa that's part of BRICS and championing this agenda. And the former president, Thabo Mbeki, had very interesting things to say. So he was speaking at um, a gathering with UNISA and the, the question of dollar dominance on the continent came up. And let's just listen to what he had to say, then we'll come and sort of react. It's a question that our colleague is raising which is about the use of the dollar as an international reserve currency. It's, it's clear this is part of what is happening. Many countries are saying, in order to avoid this consequence of the imposition of sanctions by the United States on the basis that you are using their currency, in order to avoid the consequences of sanctions that arise from that, let's walk away from the dollar. And hence, the, there's a global discussion taking place about that, and it's, some of it is bilateral. Uh, when Russia trades with China, there's no re reason why they must trade, use dollars to exchange, none. Yeah. And so that even India is saying the same thing. So globally, there's a discussion that is taking place to say we must find alternative means of trading among ourselves and not subject ourselves to the situation where there's one, there's one currency in the world which becomes a global reserve currency because it gives the country that is the issuer of the money, that's the United States. It gives it the power to impose its will on everybody because you are depending on it. I'm coming back to this matter therefore that again you have an instance here which says it is better that we had a diversified financial system rather than to be so tied up with one currency. Hence what the, the, the conflict that is taking place in, in Ukraine has produced that particular consequence. Now I don't know whether our government, we've got a colleague here who comes from government, whether they have been discussing this matter, yeah. as to whether South Africa stands with regard to all of this. Yeah, because we're a big trading country. We're a very big trading country, and, uh, and the matter of uh, this reassessment globally about the global financial system would be a matter of direct concern to us. It should be. And when we do seek to make an input uh, uh, with regard to that. Well, if you ask me, I think he makes he makes sense in the context with which he made the point on. Um, for example, um, if 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 somebody owns the currency that you use to trade, then they have power over you. They dictate how your economy will grow, how fast it will grow, the rate at which you can trade, the volumes of trade that you can trade at. For example, in Kenya right now, and I'm not even joking, go look it up, you cannot access $10,000 in one transaction. The Minister of Energy came out on national television and said, when you go to the bank and you want $10,000, you'll have to do the transaction over three days because there is dollar shortage in Kenya. Now that's just like a small transaction. Kenya heavily relies on bringing in goods into the country. We heavily import most of the raw materials that we use and even finished goods. So now tell me how these businesses are going to continue staying in business if they cannot access dollars to be able to pay their suppliers to bring goods into the continent. We are likely to suffer from chronic shortage of basic goods and also basic services if the country is not able to deal with its dollar shortage. Right now, if traders want $50,000 or $250,000, forget even a million dollars, you cannot do the transaction in Kenya. You're going to neighboring Tanzania to be able to do the transaction, you know. 
and so while well, there are many other issues that are layered in that in terms of trade imbalance and the rate at which we are producing and how aggressively we borrowed and did not use the money on development but rather recurrent expenditure the the bottom line is there is a heavy reliance on the dollar and with the u.s constantly increasing its benchmark rate to be able to deal with its homebred inflation all the other countries are feeling the ripple effect take a look at a country like zimbabwe i mean um gold mafia a revelation just came out recently and we're not saying it's the gospel truth we saw what we saw and we make out of it what we choose to make out of it but the sanctions have enabled impunity in that country the sanctions because one person holds all the power in the world is enabling impunity in that country and i think african leaders are just getting to a place where they're saying listen we cannot dispute the value of the dollar in the global economy but it's time we begin looking at alternative ways of trading and doing business without solely relying on one currency because that reduces the risk that we subject ourselves to and it's a wait and see let's wait and see how it goes if tanzania is able to do business with its local currency with foreign partners if BRICS will be successful, if Kenya will actually be able to pay for fuel with Kenya shillings as the president purports, then in a matter of six months or a year, it will be able to gauge and see, was this just one of those wishful thinking projects or is it a viable route that Africans and developing countries can begin to explore to gradually reduce their over-reliance on the US dollar and maybe, just maybe, bring some sort of relief to their ailing economies. Well, guys, that's all I had for you today. My name is Indira Ganga. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Let me know what you think about um, the sentiments by former President Tabo Mbeki. And yeah, I'll see you again next time. You can catch me on my YouTube channel, at Indira Ganga, where we discuss this for a relocation back to the continent. Or you can connect with me on social media at Andero Ogan.